All right, guys. So in another story uh, about the hard bigotry of low expectations, we have a UCLA professor who is suing the school because uh, the school punished him for refusing to be racist. Right. Yes. You, you heard that right. The school punished this professor for refusing to be racist. And what I mean by uh, refusing to be racist, essentially, um, this professor was asked to grade black students more leniently uh, following the um, George Floyd incident, Breonna Taylor stuff, and Marv Arbery stuff that happened last year. And the pre professor uh, refused to do so because um, he's not racist, right? He believes in, I don't know treating everybody equal which is apparently is a radical concept in 2021 and uh he was punished for it. now he is suing the school for it and uh, i want to go over this story because i think it again it highlights the hard bigotry of low expectations and also just how messed up academia is and i love it when professors in academia speak out against this woke nonsense because i i do believe that a lot of them are not on board with a lot of this stuff however uh because everybody in their field is essentially woke right all their colleagues they stay silent right so when those speak up and they fight back i think it's important to highlight those people that are doing it because academia guys is really what is brainwashing and controlling um a lot of uh what's going on in our society in terms of this woke movement left so um let's read here a ucla professor is suing the school for putting him on involuntary leave and allegedly threatening to fire him because he refused to grade black students more leniently than whites in the wake of george floyd's murder quote I, recently i was suspended from my job for refusing to treat my black students as lessers than their non-black peers wrote gordon klein in an op-ed on barry weiss's common sense newsletter on substat the dean of ucla's business school launched an investigation to klein's actions put him on leave and tried to terminate him wrote the professor who has taught at the university's anderson school of management for 40 years although klein was reinstated after three weeks the highly publicized controversy over the matter devastated his consultancy practice and led him to lose out on lucrative uh expert witness contracts which had compromised a bulk of his income according to the suit so yeah i mean essentially them calling this guy out is uh racist which is probably what happened they probably called him racist for not being racist okay 2020 right 2021 this is the world we live in um he ended up probably going through a lot of stress and and lost out on some income opportunities right a lot of these professors make money doing uh consultancy on the side and stuff like that okay so you know when you're labeled a racist all of a sudden okay because you <laughs> you don't want to be racist uh towards a certain group of people um yeah it, it, it's gonna cost you some some financial opportunities right and he should be compensated for that because uh the, the man is obviously not racist okay uh let's read a little bit more here klein alleges in the lawsuit that he also quote suffered severe emotional distress trauma and physical ailments as a result of the school's actions the controversy began June 2nd, 2020, eight days after Floyd was murdered at the hands of then Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. And an unidentified white student emailed Klein and asked for a no harm final for black students, meaning poor grades wouldn't be counted because of racially charged unjust murders of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd, uh, Klein said the email added it's not a joint effort to get uh finals canceled for non-black students but rather an ask that you exercise compassion compassion and leniency for black students in our major all right <laughs> that's so much to say about this it's always the white liberals that are the most racist right I i'm sorry to say and I, and I try to avoid saying stuff like this but i've experienced this so much even in my own personal life that this is the conclusion I've come to, right? That these people have no expectations for black people whatsoever at all. Zero. Because I feel like I told you guys this story before where, you know, I was at a party <laughs> um, after the whole George Floyd thing. And uh, a, a white guy comes up to me and asks me, hey, are you okay? Like, I'm, I'm just checking in and make sure you're, you're doing okay, right? Like, you're doing well and, and stuff like that. Like, you know, you know, making sure that, you know, you are all right. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like, am I all right? Like, he, he's asking me that as if I should be sad about something, right? And then he's like, you know, 
I'm just checking in, you know, with all the stuff going on in the country with, you know, the George Floyd thing. I'm just making sure that you're doing good, you know, that you, you know, that you, you, you feeling all right, you know, with all this stuff happening in the country. And I'm like, bro, what the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, I just smacked it. The... <laughs> That's literally what I was thinking. That's literally what I was thinking. You know, when he asked me that and I looked at my roommate who happened to be white. When he was asking me this stuff and my roommate gave me the look because he knows how I feel about this. He knows how anti-woke I am. OK. And, uh, you know, again, it's this white guy, this random dude who's at, who's assuming that I feel sad, that I'm hurt, that I'm crying, I'm grieving over George Floyd. And I was just so triggered by that, man. Like, I was just so like, why? You know, like. If I, I mean, it's almost like all these people think black people are literally the same, right? That we're all supposed to be upset because of what happened with George Floyd. That's black people that die every single day, right? That are killed by the police, whether justly or unjustly, or that un unjustly murdered by gangs and criminals. But you don't see people crying over that every single day, right? So why would George Floyd be any different? Why would Breonna Taylor be any different? Why would Amari Am 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 be any different? We don't cry and whine over uh, other uh, cases that I feel like are much worse than what happened to George Floyd, right? We don't we don't cry over that. So why him? Well, it's because the mainstream liberal media and the uh, white liberals, to a certain extent, have basically dictated that black people must be upset about this, right? They we must be hurt about what happened to George Floyd, and that's just simply not the case and that's why i'm not surprised to see that it wasn't a black student that reached out to this professor and asked him to do that it was a white student that reached out and asked him to do this because they have this daddy complex with the black community where they think that they can control how black people are supposed to think how they're supposed to feel who they're supposed to vote for everything right this is what it is it's just one of those things that just, it annoys the hell out of me right in the op-ed, uh, Klein wrote that he was shocked by the proposal, which he found deeply patronizing and offensive to black students. Klein shot back with a sarcastic reply, which critics slammed as racist. Quote, are there any students that may be of mixed heritages, such as half black, half Asian? The professor wrote in his reply, would you, what would you suggest I do with respect to them? A full concession or just half? <laughs> also, do you have any idea if any students are from Minneapolis? I assume that they are probably especially devastated as well. I am thinking that a white student from there might possibly be even more devastated by this, especially because some might think that they're racist, even if they are not Dang, 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 dang. That is an excellent reply from this professor, right? First of all, again, these people that just assume that, you know, uh, black people are just supposed to be hurt by this. Again, what do you define as black, right? If I'm 10% black, am I supposed to get, um, <laughs> you know, j just 10% of a concession, right? Like, how is that supposed to work? If I have just one drop of blackness in me, am I considered black? Again, that goes back to the one drop rule. Uh, which basically everybody agrees was kind of racist, right? Back doing slavery, okay? And here we are, you know, white liberals uh, endorsing this type of stuff, right? This type of rhetoric, okay? Just assuming that all black people are the same, okay? Regardless of their heritage. Also on top of that, again, you know, if you're from Minneapolis and you're white, <laughs> you know, or you're a white person in this country, you're a white cop. Right. Uh, I, I would think that you would probably be facing uh, a lot of uh, negative stigmas. Right. A lot of trauma from this because people, again, unjustly are going to think you're racist. They're going to judge you unjustly. But as a black person in this country, what effect did George Floyd death really have on me? Besides people throwing a pity party for me unnecessarily. Not really much. Right. Can't really speak on it. I'm just saying. The response, which was posted to social media, ignited a firestorm and a petition demanding his termination, garnered more than 20,000 signatures. Klein is alleging breach of contract and other claims and is suing the school for unspecified damages, not only to redress the wrongful conduct he has endured, but also to protect academic freedom. UCLA didn't uh, immediately return a request for comment. Yep. So, <laughs> again, uh, this guy is being punished for essentially... 
uh, refusing to be racist, and it's a shame. Now, uh, he did write an op-ed on this, okay, and, and I want to read a little bit of it because I think it, it kind of um, hits the nail on the head in regards to how academia has essentially poisoned um, their field with this idea of equity, diversity, and inclusion, right? So uh, this op-ed here, I'm going to start at the part where he basically expands on uh, the student making a request for him to grade black people more lately. He says, to try to make his case, the student drew on UCLA's equity, diversity, and inclusion agenda, which uh, directs professors to grant preferential equity to students belonging to underrepresented groups. Again, racist, by definition, racist, right? Telling professors to treat other people differently, okay, based off their skin color. I wholeheartedly support these principles, as most of us understand. I think all human beings should be treated the same. I welcome, I celebrate a diversity of opinions and arguments. And to say the least, I believe in making room for anyone with grades and gumption to study at one of the nation's most competitive universities. But academia has so corrupted these words that they are now hollow out corpses devoid of their original meaning. Today, diversity means ideological uh, homogeneity and inclusion means the exclusion of some from a taxpayer supported university to, to favor others deemed more deserving of an educational springboard to prosperity quote i have a law degree and i'm pretty sure that the university's uh edi agenda violates proposition uh 209 the, the california constitution's prohibition against race-based preferences in uh public education voters enacted this decades ago and reaffirmed it last year at the ballot box so i opted to follow the state constitution and my conscience yeah so i 100 percent agree with this guy Right. And I hope that he sues the hell out of UCLA and I hope that he wins. Right. I hope he gets paid a whole lot of money for all of the trauma. Right. That he's experienced. Right. Because people love using that word trauma. Right. So I hope this professor for all the trauma that he's experienced from this gets paid handsomely. OK. And kudos to him for um, refusing to be a flaming racist in the name of diversity, equity and inclusion. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.